Hello, good day to everyone. Welcome to my class, Experimental Psychology, Laboratory Component. Kasi ang Experimental Psychology, di ba, merong dalawang component yan, may lecture at merong laboratory. So, this one, itong pinakikinggan nyo ngayon, this is Experimental Psychology, the Laboratory Component. So, wala naman tayo masyadong gagawin ngayon. It's more on answering your basic questions about this subject na hinahandle ko. And usually, when students enter a subject for the first time, meron silang tatlong tanong about the subject. Number one, who is teaching the subject? Number two, anong mga requirements for that subject? And number three, the most important is, what will you learn from this subject? Remember, nagbigay kayo ng malaking-laking tuition fee para makakuha ng experimental psychology. No? So, sa tingin ko, nararapat lamang na maintindihan nyo kung ano ba yung kapalit ng money na ibinigay nyo. Anong skill yung matututunan nyo in exchange of that hard-earned money that you have. So, yun lang. Itong tatlong tanong na ito, sasagutin ko lang for today and then we are done for the first lecture video. Let's start with my identity. Ako si Chester Howard Manalo Lee. You just call me Sir Howard. And I think my name is very unique. Uh, it's very easy to remember because it is an international name. Chester is English, Howard is American, Manalo is Tagalog, and Lee is Chinese. So parang United Nations ang dating. At dahil ako ay kombinasyon ng Manalo and Lee, you can assume, at totoo naman, that I am half Chinese. Okay, so my mom is pure Pinay and my dad is pure Chinese, so that makes me half Chinese. I am also a registered psychometrician, so kayong mga nakikinig sa akin mga psych majors, dapat isa yan sa mga goals nyo no, in the future. When you graduate, kukuha kayo ng board exam for you to be a registered psychometrician or a registered psychologist or pwede rin namang both. So isa yan dapat sa mga plano nyo. I graduated from De La Salle University, Manila, batch 2006. I have degrees, plural form, in psychology and education. So during this time, ako ay kumuha ng dalawang diploma from our beloved university. One, AB Psychology, and the other one is Bachelor of Secondary Education. So ang pamantasang De La Salle, tinuruan niya ako kung paano maging isang psychologist at maging isang guru. And last 2012, I was able to complete my master's degree, also from La Salle, in Human Development Psychology. At alam ko na, uh, alam nyo kung anong ibig sabihin ng Human Development Psychology, di ba? Sa flowcharts nyo, ito yung Deb Psych. And I'm sure marami sa inyo, nakakuha na yata, no? Tama ba? Nakakuha na ba kayo ng Deb Psych? Um, basically, in Deb Psych, we study how the mind works as we grow older. Kasi yung pattern ng mind ng tao, nag-iiba-iba yan, depende sa edad. ba diba? Iba yung mind ng bata, ng infant, versus sa mind ng isang bata. Na ibang-iba sa mind ng mga adolescents, na ibang-iba rin naman sa mind ng mga adults. So basically, that's what I study in human development, how the mind changes as we grow older. And then just last year, 2019, I decided to further pursue my studies in human development psychology nagpi-PhD ako ngayon so hindi ko alam hanggang kailan ako magpi-PhD kaya question mark 2019 to hindi ko alam, pray for me na sana matapos ko itong pagpi-PhD ko as soon as possible work experience I was once a guidance counselor for one year Uh, in, a, in a small high school somewhere in Binondo area okay? so pero one year lang ang tinagal ko doon kasi hindi ko na enjoy yung aking pagiging guidance counselor because uh, I, I think hindi ako for counseling akala ko una it was fun pero hindi pala no? because you are being paid to listen to people's problems and at the same time come up with solutions or help them find solutions. And during those times, ang hinahandle ko mga ano, mga high school students, no? So hindi ko talaga pala interest yung makinig ng problema at tumulong sa tao na mag-solve ng kanilang problema. So I resigned after one year and after that I pursued my dream job which is to be a teacher. And it just so happened na uh, pumunta ako sa Lasal at napagsabihan ako na nangangailangan sila ng teacher. 
So, ang ginawa ko, nag, nagpasa ako ng application, and then they called me up, nag-demo teaching ako, and the rest is history, I was hired. This is already my 11th year teaching in our university. A year after I was hired by Lasal, by the psychology department, nag-apply din ako sa ating kapatid dyan sa Taft Avenue na kapitbahay din natin, the College of St. Benilde. So, nagpasa din ako ng application form and then nag-demo teaching ako na gustuhan naman nila ako and the rest is history. I was also hired by the College of St. Benilde. This is already my 10th year teaching in the, in the, in the college. So, meron akong dalawang eskwelahan na tinuturuan ngayon, Lasal and St. Benilde. Actually, hindi lang ngayon. For the past 10 years, uh, palipat-lipat lang ako dyan, Lasal and St. Benilde. Alright? And then, areas of my specializations as a psychologist, dito umiikot yung aking mga research papers, yung aking mga lectures. So, if you have any questions about any of the following topics, pwede naman kayo magtanong sa akin. I specialize in theoretical psychology, the psychology of learning, belief formation, human motivation and happiness, Biblical psychology, the psychology of money, pero ang pinaka-favorite ko yung number 7, kaya naka-color red yan, the psychology of human attraction. So, ano bang pinag-aaralan ko sa psychology of human attraction? I help my clients how to be more likable. Pinapataas ko yung kanilang tinatawag na LQ or likability quotient. Diba, if you remember in psychology, meron tayong IQ, intellectual quotient, Meron tayong EQ, Emotional Intelligence. Meron din tayong LQ, Likeability Quotient. Ibig sabihin ng Likeability Quotient, this is your ability to make other people like you or accept you. Gaano ka kagaling na, na intindihin yung ibang tao o uh, para ma-accept ma ka nila as a person. Kasi iba't iba ang mga tao when it comes to LQ. May mga tao malakas, mataas ang LQ. Lahat gusto sila, kaya sila very popular among people. Meron din naman mga tao na mabababa ang LQ. Lahat ng tao galit sa kanila. I help those people with low levels of LQ. Paano ba yan pataasin? Kasi you have to remember na ang pagiging likable para magustuhan ka ng ibang tao, it's conditional. Hindi yan automatic, di ba? Meron kang mga psychological principles na dapat gawin or dapat i-apply para magustuhan ka ng ibang tao. Yan yung tinuturo ko sa mga clients ko. What are these psychological principles that you can apply para magustuhan ka ng ibang tao? Kaya nga, di ba, may sine, may tanong, bakit hindi ka crush ng crush mo? Anong sagot dyan? Ang sagot dyan, hindi mo kasi ina-apply yung mga psychological principles that will make your crush like you back. So, yan yung mga tinuturo ko sa aking mga clients. How do you apply the psychological principles to make other people accept you as a person? Pero, bigyan ko kayo ng isang clue or ng isang demo kung ano ba ang isa sa mga sagot sa tanong na yan. Okay? Ano ba yung dapat mong gawin para maging crush ka ng crush mo? You have to create chemistry between you and that person. Sabi nga, di ba? Chemistry is you touching my arm and it's setting fire to my mind. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng chemistry. Yung nag-touch lang yung mga arms nyo, pareho na kayong on fire. Ibig sabihin, ganyan kaganda yung chemistry nyo. But unfortunately, this kind of chemistry, it is not innate. It is not inborn. Diba? Meron kang mga, again, mga psychological principles na dapat mong gawin to cultivate that kind of chemistry. Yan yung tinuturo ko sa mga clients ko. Ano ba, ano ba yung mga dapat mong gawin para magkaroon ka ng chemistry with another person para ang ending, you like each other. So, yan ang aking mga areas of specializations. So, again, kung may mga tanong kayo about those things, you can just ask me. Other information about myself that maybe you would like to know, I play a lot of sports, I am a very active guy, ayoko talaga na nagigain ng weight, gusto ko lagi akong pinagpapawisan, so I play a lot of basketball, I also run, I lift weights, I swim, I play tennis, basta yung aking lifestyle is very active. Number two, I also love reading. In fact, yung word na love is is under is an understatement. I am addicted to reading. As in, feeling ko mamamatay ako pag 
hindi ako nagbabasa. So, every time na meron akong free time, imbis na nag-check ako ng Facebook, ng Instagram, which by the way, hindi ko masyadong ginagawa, I would rather read books. At kitang-kita nyo naman, background ko pa lang, di ba? Yan yung aking mga libro na mga binabasa. In fact, itong mga librong ito, ano pa lang yan eh, uh, nasa likod ko pa lang, kal- pa lang yan, meron pa ako dito sa gilid, ilang, leb- ilang shelves ba to? Uh, meron akong 7 shelves dito sa gilid at meron pa akong tatlong shelf dito sa aking harapan anyway, ang summary lang dito is mahilig ako, adik ako magbasa okay and number 3, I would also like to share with you na sa tingin ko I have a blessed life paano ko nasabi, I get paid for what I love doing the most which is teaching so araw-araw gumigising ako mag-online class ako, gagawa ako ng mga lectures na ganito at the same time maya-maya eh susweldo na ako di ba? I mean that's the best part of my life yung aking passion is also my career and that is also my prayer to you as my students in the future sana makita nyo yung ganyan nyo no? sabi nga ni Confucius choose a job that you love and you will never have to work a day in your life so sana kayong mga nakikinig sa akin eh makita nyo yan in the future, yung passion nyo, ma-convert nyo yan sa inyong trabaho. Because that is one of the best things that can happen to you in your life. Yung na-convert mo yung passion mo into something na ginagawa mo araw-araw and at the same time, you are being paid for doing it. And one last thing about myself, meron pala akong YouTube channel. Uh, meron akong YouTube channel na dapat mag-subscribe kayo. Okay? Don't get me wrong, no? Bakit ko ba gustong mag-subscribe kayo? Hindi dahil para dumami yung aking subscribers para ma-monetize yung channel ko. In fact, wala sa isip ko yung monetize, monetize na yan, no? I don't, I don't need to be monetized by YouTube to survive, no? I have my other ways to survive. Pero the reason why gusto kong mag-subscribe kayo kasi yung channel na ito, Marami siyang mga contents na sa tingin ko makakatulong sa inyo not only as psych majors but also as people with souls, di ba? So yung mga contents ko talks about things about the soul, thing things about the mind. Kaya sa tingin ko malaking tulong, no? Baka mag-improve yung inyong mga buhay kapag pinanood niyo yung mga contents ng aking channel. At meron din naman akong mga ano, mga psych related contents. Kaya kung psych major ka, eh, dapat mag-subscribe ka sa channel ko. So, ito yung una yung assignment for the day. After yung makinig ng lecture video ko ngayon, mag-subscribe kayo sa channel ko. And, pwede rin kayong ano ha, pwede nyo rin tong i-refer to someone na sa tingin mo kailangan niya yung channel na to. Oo, lalong-lalo na yung mga kakilala yung mga psych majors din. Kahit sa ibang school pa yan, you, know, you can recommend to be a member or to, to subscribe to this channel. You just type Chester Howard Lee in YouTube, tapos may kita nyo yung, uh, may kita nyo yung symbol na yan, and that's me. Okay? So, yan yung una yung gagawin after you listen to my lecture video. Now, let's go to the specific details about the subject natin dito sa Experimental Psychology Laboratory Component. Grading System, ganito. Online assignment, 60%. Malaking parte yan ng grade nyo, no? So, yung online assignments na yan, binubuo yan ng pre-lecture task at mga post-lecture task. Pre-lecture task, ito yung mga bagay na gagawin nyo before you listen to my lecture video. So, wag na wag kayong manonood ng lecture video hanggat hindi nyo pa nakukumpleto yung pre-lecture task. Usually, yung pre-lecture task na yan, ina-upload yan sa Animo Space. Okay? So, pre-lecture task, gawin nyo muna kumpletuhin nyo, tapos i-upload nyo yon sa assignments link ng Animo Space. And that's the only time that you should watch my lecture video. After nyo panoorin yung lecture video ko, magkakaroon kayo ng post-lecture task. These are tasks that are designed to help you apply the things that you have learned from my lecture video. Kasi bawat video na ginawa ko, meron niyang mga skills na tinuturo at i-apply nyo yan doon sa post-lecture task. Graded din yan. So, after nyo manood ng video ko, open nyo yung post-lecture task, i-kompletuhin nyo, upload nyo ulit sa Animo Space. So, puro lang tayo ganyan. Except for this episode kasi, ano eh, first time ito, wala mo ng pre-lecture task. Okay? 
And then for the final project, 40%, written report is 20%, oral report is 20%. Just to give you a bird's eye view, ano bang gagawin nyo sa final project? Gagawa kayo ng isang psychological experiment. Diba? Kaya nga kayo nasa subject na ito para maturuan kayo kung paano gumawa ng psychological experiment. So, bilang patunay na natuto nga kayo sa uh, psychological experiments, magdi-design kayo ng sarili nyong psychological experiments online. Wala namang tayong choice but to do this online kasi nga naka-quarantine tayong lahat. No? So, yun lang. At the end of the day, Uh, as that as the term uh, as the term ends yan yung pinaka final output na gagawin nyo gagawa kayo ng sarili nyo ang psychological experiment and by the way don't worry kasi itong final project na ito will be done in groups so bubuo kayo ng mga grupo gagawin natin yan as we approach the the time where you are going to do your psychological experiment maliwanag ba oo so more about that as we go along Uh, meron ba tayong textbook na required na gamitin? Wala naman, hindi naman siya required. You know? But just to let you know, this is the textbook na ginagamit ko for my lecture videos. The one written by Myers and Hansen. Hindi naman kinakailangan na maghanap kayo ng libro na ganyan na ganyan. Any book on experimental psychology would work. Pare-pareho lang naman sila ng sinasabi. You know? It's just that itong libro ang ginagamit ko, Eh, magaling kasi silang mag-explain in a very simple way. Okay? So, hindi nyo kinakailangan bumili ng libro. wag na kayong lumabas at maghanap pa ng libro on experimental psychology. Again, any book on experimental psychology would work. Hard copy man yan or soft copy. So, kamusta na tayo dito? I think we are done with numbers 1 and 2. Now, we move on to number 3. The most important part of our day is to talk about what we learn from this subject. Okay? Let me start my number three with a story. ba diba, sabi ko kanina, eh, mahilig ako mag-basketball. So, meron akong story na ikukwento sa inyo na tungkol sa basketball when I was in high school. So, when I was in high school, meron kaming intramurals noon. And in this game, kung saan nangyayari itong kwentong, kwento ko na to, no? Uh, kinausap ako ng coach namin. Meron kaming kalaban na team na malakas. Kaya malakas yung team na to kasi meron silang star player noon na sobrang galing naman talaga na ang average points niya every game is, uh, is around 35 points. 35 points per game. So, ganun siya kagaling. No? So, sabi ng coach ko sa akin, Howard, this game, para matalo natin tong team na to, kinakailangan mahinto mo sa depensa etong magaling na player na to. So, ngayon, hindi ka i-score, sabi sa akin. Huwag kang umiscore ngayon. Ang goal mo, bantayan siya. Huwag siyang maka 35 points. So, yan yung goal ko for that game. no So, it's a very big challenge for me kasi syempre, gusto ko rin namang umiscore. Pero, you know, I want I want my team to win. So, nag-sacrifice na lang ako. No? So, sabi ko, hindi ako i-score for this game. Magpo-focus ako sa depensa. Ngayon, To make the long story short, nagsimula na yung game, eh, nag-experiment ako ng iba't ibang mga depensa ko para hindi siya makascore ng 35 points. So, yung una kong strategy, yung tinatawag kong pesky defense. Diba? Ibig sabihin ng pesky defense sa mga sa basketball terminology, talagang as much as possible, ididikit mo yung katawan mo doon sa binabantayan mo. Hindi mo siya bibigyan ng space drumibol, hindi mo siya bibigyan ng space na makagalaw. So, yun yung una kong strategy. Naging matagumpay ba yung strategy ko? The answer is no. Kasi, uh, dalawang beses niya akong tinirahan while I am giving him a pesky defense. Ganun siya kagaling. No? Talagang winawasiwas lang niya ako, naka 2 out of 2 siya, naka dalawang layup siya. So, sabi ko, hindi ito pwede, no? Uh, kailangan palitan ko yung strategy ko. So, from strategy 1, pumunta ako sa strategy 2. Binigyan ko yung, binigay ko sa kanya yung left lane. Again, if you know basketball terminology, di ba? Uh, kapag binigay mo yung left lane, ibig sabihin, uh, you are forcing him to use his weak hand. Di ba? You are forcing him to use only one side, yung kanyang isang kamay, para... mag-move. 
And mas madaling ano yon, mas madali siyang bantayan kasi predictable yung movement niya, no? So he only goes to one side. So I just gave him that left lane. Naging matagumpay ba yung aking second strategy? The answer is no. Kasi naka 2 out of 2 naman siya sa strategy na ito. So mabilis talaga eh. Mabilis yung kanyang first step, mabilis siyang drumable na kahit predictable kung saan siya pupunta, nilalagpasan lang niya ako. So, nagpalit ako ng strategy, pumunta ako sa strategy number 3, and then binigay ko naman yung right lane. So, bakit ko naman binigay yung right lane? Kasi sa basketball, ang assumption is kapag magaling ka sa isang kamay, most likely mahina yung isang kamay mo. Ang tawag namin dyan is weak hand. If you have your strong hand, you have your weak hand. So, umaasa ako na baka pag binigay ko yung kabilang lane, ito yung weak hand niya. Ang tanong, naging matagumpay ba? The answer is no. Useless. Two out of two. Kahit binigay ko sa kanya yung side where I was expecting him to be his weak hand, hindi pa rin nag-work. Dalawang beses, nilay up na naman ako. Ibig sabihin, this guy, wala siyang weak hand. Left or right, kaya niyang umiscore. Ganyan siya kagaling. So, I am getting desperate kasi at this point, nakailang points na siya. Uh, lahat naman to, two points, no? So, naka... Ano na siya? 4, 8, naka-12 points na siya. So, strategy number 4, eto na talaga, desperate na ako, ano? Ginawa ko, binigay ko sa kanya yung jump shot. Ibig sabihin ng give the jump shot, eh, kapag hawak niya yung bola, magsasag ako. Ibig sabihin yung lalayuan ko siya to tempt him to take the jump shot. Diba? Kasi kapag lumayo ka sa defender, tapos ikaw yung, ikaw yung may bola, lumayo yung defender mo sa'yo, matatempt ka ngayong tumira kasi hindi kanya binabantayan. And what happened? For strategy number 4, the story is different. etong binabantayan ko, 0 out of 12 sa kanyang performance. Ibig sabihin, to make the long story short, ano pala ang weakness ng binabantayan ko? Wala siyang jump shot. Hindi siya marunong mag jump shot. Wala siyang outside shooting. So, all, all those times, during the game, binigay ko lang ng binigay sa kanya yung jump shot, 0 out of 12. So, to make the long story short, hindi siya naka-35 points. 12 points lang siya. At dahil 12 points lang siya, his team faltered, nanalo yung team namin. O, ba? Ngayon, anong kinalaman ng story ko na yan sa subject natin? Remember, our subject is all about experiment. Okay? And one thing you have to remember about experiment is, isa itong paraan para sumagot ng tanong. Kaya tayo nag experiment kasi meron tayong isang tanong na gusto nating masagot. So if you have any questions right now in your mind, one way to answer that question is to do an experiment. Doon sa story ko, ang question ko is, how can I stop this guy from scoring 35 points? So what did I do? To answer that question, I used experiment. Sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay, ganyan din. ba? Marami tayong mga tanong. Like, anong daan ang hindi ako malilate? Anong perfume ang mas mabango? Anong ulam ang mas masarap? Mag-aaral ba ako o hindi? O, when it comes to relationships, ba? Pag marami nang liligaw sa'yo, sino ba ang pipiliin ko? So, these are the questions na meron tayo sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay na kayang-kaya sagutin ng experiment. So again, going back to those questions, kung gusto mong malaman yung mga sagot dyan, one way to do it, mag-experiment ka. Now, even in psychology, ba tayong mga psych majors, marami rin tayong tinatanong about how the mind works. Are males more sexually aggressive than females? Are married individuals happier than unmarried individuals? Can religion lower down stress level? ba Mga tanong ito in psychology. And the thing is, Kayang-kaya nating masagot itong mga tanong na ito simply by using experiments. ba? Isa yan sa mga methods na pwede nating gamitin para masagot yung mga tanong natin about how the mind works. Sabi nga ni Ralph Waldo Emerson about experiment, no? All life is an experiment. The more experiments, the more experiments you make, the better. The more experiments you make, the better. I, bakit? Kasi the more na nag-experiment ka, mas marami kang tanong na nasasagot. And the more questions that you are able to answer, the better your life becomes. ba? Kaya yan yung ginagawa natin dito sa subject na ito. I am teaching you a skill 
which is to answer a question. Pero ito ang medyo problema when it comes to experimenting, no? Doing psychological experiment is not easy. Marami kang mga concepts na dapat maintindihan, marami kang mga uh, methods na dapat sundin for your experiment to be effective. Di ba? Sabi nga nila, no, isa sa mga pinaka-technical na subject na pwede na makukuha mo sa pagiging psych major mo is experimental psychology. Kasi napaka-ano natin dito, eh, napaka-obsess natin dito sa methods. Napaka-obsess natin dito sa mga concepts, sa mga technical terms. Para masigurado mo na yung experiment na ginawa mo ay tama. And that's very important, by the way. It's very important to be sure na yung ginawa mong experiment, tama ang method. Kasi doon manggagaling yung conclusion mo eh. So kapag mali kasi yung experiment mo, mali rin yung conclusion mo. And we don't like that. We don't like to be concluding things about how the mind works na mali. ba? Diba? So para masigurado mo na tama yung experiment mo, tama yung pagkaka-execute mo ng experiment, eh kinakailangan na iintindihan mo yung mga basic concepts. Like for example, if you read the following questions from 1 to 5, ito yung mga questions na dapat alam na alam mo ang sagot para masigurado mo na tama ang experiment mo. Okay? Masahin natin isa-isa. What sign should alert the experimenter that a ceiling effect in a psychological experiment may be present? Give two interventions that can be applied in a within subject design experiment to prevent confounding variables coming from contamination effect. What does it mean when we say that there is interaction between two IVs in a factorial experiment? In what way can demand characteristics negatively affect the result of a psychological experiment? Give two ways on what an experimenter can do to eliminate a confounding variable. Diba? Napaka-technical pakinggan ng mga tanong but you have to be able to know the answers to these questions para masigurado mo na tama yung takbo ng experiment mo at yan yung kapalit ng tuition fee na binigay nyo sa ating university in exchange of the money tuturuan ko kayo kung paano sagutin yung mga tanong na yan that's what I promise you parang kanta yata yun ha no This I promise you. Pero yun yung pangako ko sa inyo, no? Na after this term, I guarantee you na kayang-kaya mo nang sagutin yung mga tanong na yan. Numbers 1 to 5 na yan, mamaniin mo na lang yan at the end of the term. And more than that, dahil master na master mo na yung mga questions na yan, meron ka na ring ability na gumawa ng psychological experiment in a correct way. Maliwanag ba? So in summary, that's what this subject is all about. I am going to teach you the skill of running a psychological experiment. I am going to teach you how to answer psychological questions using psychological experiments. Now before we go, before we end this first lecture video, meron lang akong short note between the lecture component of experimental psych and the laboratory component. ba? Diba? Alam nyo naman to, no? Na, uh, itong subject natin na to, na laboratory, meron itong component na lecture. Now, here's the thing. Uh, it's possible na may mga ituturo sa lecture component na hindi ko maituturo. And that's fine. Kasi nga, naituro na, so hindi ko na kailangan ituro. Pero meron din mga pagkakataon na mag-overlap kami. In fact, mas madalas yun eh. Yung tinuro niya, ituturo ko rin. In those instances, okay lang yun. In fact, maganda nga yun because that means we are reinforcing those knowledge na pareho naming tinuturo. So don't, don't, be, don't feel weird na parang wala naman pinagkaiba yung lecture and lab meron. Huh? Oh, sa so pag tinuro ng lecture, tinuro, na, tinuro ko sa lab, It's reinforcing your knowledge. And also, pwede rin namang meron akong mga bagay na tinuturo dito na hindi rin naman tinuturo sa lecture. Okay lang din yun. Parang advantage naman yun eh. So that's added knowledge to you. Maliwanag ba? Oo. So again, 
uh, magkaiba yung units ng lecture sa lab pero we are very much related pero because of the pandemic medyo yung, yung mahirap mag-coordinate ngayon mahirap mag-coordinate ngayon kasi nga we are not in the same physical university ba diba? so yung teacher nyo sa lecture uh, malayo kami sa isa't isa so medyo mahirap mag-communicate pero we are doing our best you know we, we are also communicating with each other para as much as possible in sync yung tinuturo sa lecture and sa lab pero again yun nga ang pinaka difference between lecture and lab lecture very conceptual laboratory very practical laboratory is here to give you an opportunity to apply what you have been learning from the lecture but again kahit na laboratory tayo eh madalas uulitin ko pa rin no yung mga concepts na tinuturo sa lecture kasi i think those concepts are very important to be repeated para talagang masigurado natin na naiintindihan nyo yung mga concepts na yon that are very critical if you want to run a successful psychological experiment okay so yun lang Thank you for listening to our first uh, lecture video for the term. Ang gagawin nyo lang after this is uh, you're going to wait for the next lecture video after this lesson. Thank you for listening and God bless.